In this video, I'd like to share with you a mnemonic to help guide you through the preoperative anesthetic assessment. So if you find yourself at a loss uh, when approaching a patient, uh, you can just think of this mnemonic and uh, it should help get you through. Okay? Uh, so the mnemonic is Y ample, and we'll go through it kind of one by one. Okay? So why, being the first question you want to ask yourself when you see a patient having surgery, is why are they having the surgery in the first place? I mean, and that should just be kind of part of your natural curiosity in, in being in medicine. Um, if someone's having an operation, you want to know why. Uh, and you can use this curiosity to kind of help guide your history a little bit further. So, uh, for example, if a patient's having a laparoscopic cholecystectomy uh, for supposed gallstones, um, what does that typically present as? It, it typically presents as kind of right upper quadrant pain, um, but that it, but it can also radiate into the chest. So their presenting symptom could be chest pain. Um, well, you know, what's one of the most important causes of chest pain that we have to rule out? Uh, myocardial ischemia. Um, so you, you want to ask yourself, has this patient been properly worked up? Is this, is this pain really coming from gallstones, or could they be having some underlying ischemia? Uh, that's that's kind of the purpose of, of understanding why a patient's having a, a particular surgery. Okay, the next A being anesthetic history, and that's that's obviously very important because we want to make sure uh, if they've had surgeries in the past that they didn't have any issues with general anesthetics, whether they have a significant history of post-op nausea vomiting because that can guide our prophylaxis. Um, uh, and if they haven't had anesthetics before, you want to make sure you ask about family history, if there's any family history of any problems around surgery. Um, as kind of screening questions for some of the more rare disorders like pseudocholinesterase deficiency or malignant hyperthermia. Uh, the next thing is medications. And like any particular history, uh, knowing what meds a patient on what meds a patient is on is, is very important. And kind of side by side with that is, of course, allergies. Um, the next P is past medical history, and that's obviously very important. Um, and it's very important that I've kind of, I've, so I've kind of broken it down by system here. So we can kind of talk about this a little bit. Uh, so, you know, I usually like to start with the respiratory system, and you want to make sure you know about a history of COPD, or smoking, if they have a history of asthma, and a way to kind of get at that is, you know, do they ever have to use puffers to help them breathe? Cardiovascular system, obviously you want to know about ischemia uh, or any kind of ischemic symptoms or failure symptoms. Uh, for the GI system and the liver, you obviously want to know about any kind of decrease in liver function because that... Um, the liver is obviously very important in metabolizing a lot of the drugs that uh, we as anesthetists give. And in terms of, of your, your risk of aspiration, you want to ask about reflux symptoms as well. Okay. Uh, in terms of the central nervous system, you want to know about a history of stroke or seizures um, uh, or kind of any pre-existing pre neuro deficits. Uh, like, for example, if you wanted to put in a, uh, a spinal anesthetic, uh, you want to know if they have any kind of distal neuropathies already existing. Renal function, you want to know if they, you know, history of chronic kidney disease or any kind of other form of decreased renal function. Again, uh, because the kidney is very important in the um, excretion and elimination of many of the drugs that we give. The endocrine system, you want to know about a history of diabetes, any kind of thyroid problems. Um, diabetes is a big thing because surgery is a, a stressful situation, so um, that can cause kind of a, a dramatic increase in blood sugar uh, and could potentially tip someone over into a, a diabetic ketoacidosis if their blood sugar is not controlled. Um, and on, on the other side of things, you know, people are fasting around the time of surgery. Um, 
So they can potentially go the other way. They can potentially go hypoglycemic as, as well. From a, from a hematological perspective, you want to know if there's any kind of coagulopathies. Um, that's obviously a, a very big contraindication for neuraxial anesthesia. Um, and it's good to know as, as well because it can affect interoperative uh, transfusion and fluid management. And from an MSK perspective, you want to know if there's any history of rheumatoid arthritis because that can affect uh, our, our manipulation of the neck um, for airway management purposes or just, just kind of any unusual neck stiffness um, is, is important to know about as, as well. So that's kind of a quick screen of the, of the past medical history. Uh, the L in Ample is when was their last meal. You just want to confirm that they've been NPO. Uh, for a significant enough uh, time. And then E is our physical examination. And we can talk in another video about the airway exam. And then you usually want to do just a quick kind of cardio and respiratory exam as well, just to kind of confirm that their status is what, uh, what they say it is on their history. So that's just a quick mnemonic that uh, <clears throat> can help you get through the preoperative assessment of a patient uh, before you give them an anesthetic. Okay, thanks for watching.